Fandom, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about the Spider-Verse hardcover, or as I like to call it, the biggest disappointment of 2015. I'll get to that in a minute. Let's get into it. So if you've been reading Spider-Man for probably the past three years, you know Dan Slott's been the guy that's been orchestrating everything that's been going on with him, and he's had a caveat of different artists on this series, but Dan Slott recently just came off of Superior Spider-Man, where he basically killed Peter Parker and had Doc Ock take over his mind. If you've never read Superior, it's actually a pretty fun read, and I recommend you do. But he just brought back Peter Parker, and he threw him into this event called Spider-Verse. What happens in Spider-Verse is that there is this villain called Morloon, and Morloon's actually been a guy who's been around Spider-Man for a long time. And he meets up with his family, and his family is basically going universe by universe, parallel dimension by parallel dimension, and killing the different Spider-Man of that universe and feeding off of them, and they are growing eternal because of it. Because Morloon and his family are going around universe by universe and killing Spider-Man, what ends up happening is that different Spider-Men start joining together, and they go, hey, we're going to unleash this full-on war of all these different Spider-Men, and we're going to go right to their base, we're going to attack them, we're going to fight, and we're going to beat them and hopefully win. I think what's really interesting about this is that it gives a bunch of different writers a lot of room to play. They get to write Spider-Man 2099, they get to write Spider-Man Noir, they get to create their own Spider-Man, and because of this we get characters like Silk and the popular Spider-Gwen, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit, and some, that actually ties into one of the problems that I have with this book, but it's just a fun ride all the way through. I gotta say, as a threat, these are probably some of the best villains that I've seen in a Spider-Man book in a very long time. Morlun's family is genuinely creepy, and they do actually kill a lot of spider people in this book, so it amps up the stakes a lot more because they continuously get more powerful and more powerful to the point where Morlun's father takes down a hugely powerful spider character. I'm not going to give away who it is because it was a shocking moment, but you think that that Spider-Man is actually holding his own, and Morlun is playing with him throughout the entire fight, and I was like, Wow, that really took a turn for the worse. And it ups the stake in a sense that there is a real danger of this because any Spider-Man can go, aside from, you know, obviously the main Peter Parker. Art-wise, you're getting guys like David LaFuente all the way to Paco Diaz. Bear in mind that this does span every single Spider-Man book that is on the shelf right now. They all tied into this in some way, somehow. So you are getting a bunch of different artists, and there really wasn't anybody too terrible. It kind of ranged from good to bad. A lot of the action scenes were really cool. A lot of the dra dramatic moments were really great. But for the most part, it's solid all around. You're probably wondering at this point, hey, hardcover. Everything you've said so far is great about this book. What makes it the biggest disappointment of the year? Let's get into that. Let's start with the super thin paper that Marvel decided to use. I don't know what they are on lately, but the paper that they've been using on hardcovers like this has been kind of terrible, and the paper has actually started to warp inside of my room. Mind you, I live in an air-conditioned home. It's not like I live in the middle of the desert, but super thin paper like this that is starting to warp in an air-conditioned, very well-kept room where none of my books have done this, it's not a good sign, guys. You put together something really cheap paper-wise on this. The biggest! The biggest problem with this, it's out of chronological order. Dancelot has actually gone on Twitter and saying, hey, we had to do it story-wise because we wanted the story to kind of make more sense. It doesn't make sense if you read the book from beginning to end. You have to jump around pages and you have to find certain issues in a certain way in order for this story to make sense. You're probably wondering, well, if it's not in chronological order, what type of order is it in? Well, it's all grouped in by series. You're getting all the Amazing Spider-Man issues together. You're getting all the Superior Spider-Man issues together. You're getting the Spider-Womans, they're all jumbled in together. And the problem is that if you read it from beginning to end, you will finish the main storyline halfway through the book without reading half of the, of the tie-ins. Well, I gotta say, at least Marvel was kind enough to put together a chronological reading order of the book. So there's that. But here's my problem with this. They didn't include page numbers. There are no page numbers. It would have been so easy to slap a page number on these on the reading order list like you'd have in a book and go, Oh, okay, well, I'm supposed to read Spider-Man 2099. Let me flip through that the book and go to that page. It would have been so easy. Or they give you a chronological reading order. They could have put this together in chronological reading order. It should also be noted that if you want to get the entire Spider-Verse series, you actually have to go out and buy the Edge of Spider-Verse tie-in. Yes, the Gwen Stacy issue, the one that everybody's been clamoring over, the one that everybody's been loving, the spider one issue that introduces her origin, it's in a separate book. And the chronological order of this actually includes the Edge of Spider-Verse. So you actually have to go in, buy another trade, that was originally solicited 
inside of this hardcover and they decided to pull it out at the last minute. I don't know why, maybe to make a quick buck. Overall, I'm gonna give this two ratings. Spider-Verse as a story is a great Marvel event. I really enjoyed reading it. I thought the characters were fun. I thought it's a blast. I thought Morloon's family is actually a genuine threat and I can't wait to see more of them in future Spider-Man issues. And I give that a solid 8. As an overall package, this thing is kind of a mess. You've got work paper, it's out of chronological order. They've taken Spider-Verse issues out of it to include it in a separate trade paperback because they knew, hey, if we include the Spider-Gwen story inside of this trade paperback that is not in here, and it should be because it's in the chronological order, people are going to go and buy that and we'll get an extra dime out of it. Really, this is just a mess all around and it's such a disappointment because they had a chance to put something really special together here for a really Really great event and I'm really disappointed with this there are no special features in this aside from a variant cover gallery at the end of it for 75 bucks Marvel could have done a lot better with all the negatives I pointed out I'm gonna end up giving the spider-verse hardcover a five and that's me being generous this really is the biggest disappointment of the year for me I wanted this to be so great but hey it's a shame now if you do not have any problems with the stuff that I listed and you're like hey well, I'll take the risk with the warped paper, and it, it doesn't really bother me that stories are not in chronological order. I can jump around. It won't be a problem. Pick it up. Now, I do like to show off the book itself at the end of the video, so you guys get a good look at it. I will say that... Here's the dust jacket. Dust jacket's pretty cool. But the real treat of this, and I actually wanted to get rid of the dust jacket because this looks awesome. I love this. I think this is one of the best cover designs I've seen in a long time. That's really, really cool. There's that. There's the spine. There's that. If this is your first time checking out my channel, I do weekly reviews like the one you just saw on comic books, trade paperbacks, special editions, and things of that nature. I am going to be starting to cover manga pretty soon. I just finished 20th Century Boys, and I'm going to be reviewing that next week. I love to hear back from you. You guys are awesome. And if you did read Spider-Verse, what did you think of the overall event? And what was your favorite, favorite Spider-Man from the event? You can leave that down below in the comments section. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. That is the best way to get a hold of me. I'm going to put that in the description. I love hearing back from you guys. You guys are awesome. Bye.